In this short video, I'm going to talk about using non-open content in an open educational resource. You absolutely can use copyrighted content that is not under a Creative Commons license in an open educational resource. There are two ways. The common one, and the safe one, is to ask the rights holder for permission to use it. That means you're getting a license to use it, and you'll probably be paying for it. You will need to tell the rights holder what content that you're using, how much, what you're doing with it, and what Creative Commons license it will be under. You may get turned down, or you may not, but it's always worth asking if the content is what you need. The other way to use copyrighted content is under fair use. Fair use is incredibly complicated, and it's also very restricted online, so the simplest answer is just don't do it. But the truer answer is, you can almost never do it, but if it's an extremely little bit being used for educational purposes in a way that can't possibly be mistaken or substituted for the original, then it's okay. Transformative works would also be fine, but that is too big a topic for this video. If you want to know what a transformative work is, Google transformative work, Empire State College, and my explanation comes up. What if it's your own content that you want to make into an open educational resource or use part of in an OER? Well, if you are the rights holder, then absolutely go ahead and use it. Many textbook authors are putting their textbooks out as OER once they go out of print. But just because you created a piece of content does not mean that you're the rights holder. If you wrote a book, you may have assigned the copyright to the publisher. If you wrote an article, you may have assigned the copyright to the journal. You will have to check any contracts or letters of agreement. Even if you are no longer the rights holder, you still may be able to buy back your copyright. If you developed content as part of your job, it may have been a work for hire, and your employer might own it. I can't address questions about whether academic content, like courses, that you developed for Empire State College belong to you or to the college. That's because it depends on too many factors. You can check the wording of your employment contract and any letters of agreement or grants. You may want to ask Human Resources and the Union, but for the purposes of the McKnight Academy, you can expect that the college is going to be helpful and encouraging about making your content into an open educational resource. If you have any co-authors, they are also co-rights holders. All co-authors have to sign off on making content into an OER or using it in an OER. Contributors do not. What's the difference between a co-author and a contributor? It's tautological, but it amounts to whether the person is listed as an author or co-author. If they were labeled as such, they are. If they weren't, they're not. It's up to the parent institution and the publisher who gets to be listed as an author and co-author. Usually it has to do with contributing both main ideas and expression of those ideas to the content. Contributors, on the other hand, just contribute some ideas and do not contribute expression. It is very important to decide authorship roles at the beginning of the project because it's not just about getting credit, it's about control of the copyright. So if you are the rights holder, how do you make the content an open educational resource? It becomes open content as soon as you put it under a Creative Commons license, which is something I talk about in another video. And that license, and the status as open content, can't be revoked. You might put out a new version without a license or put out a new version under a different license, but the old version is still out there and still under that old license. Here's an edge case to be aware of. If somebody who is not the rights holder put content out there under a Creative Commons license, that license is not valid. And there's really no way for you to be absolutely sure that's not happening. This is messy, but not a disaster. If it does happen, remember that you're not going to be sued instantly the worst that's going to happen is a DMCA takedown, which you can comply with, and then nothing will come of it. And even that's unlikely. When I asked the Creative Commons organization about it, it took them several days to reply, because they were trying to find an example of it happening, and they couldn't. I just want you to be aware of the distant possibility, because there are people who put pirated commercial educational resources out there and call them OERs. They're usually textbooks and they're usually found on personal websites or hosting sites like Scribd. Usually they're not marked as OERs at all, but even when they are called OERs, they don't have the appropriate Creative Commons information. So just be wary of things like that. If you recognize the name of a commercial publisher, check to see if it's out of print. If it's not, it's probably pirated, not OER. 